So, you like to look? Take a gander at my favorite cock. I feel drawn in to the person's character. I really like I the way that apart, really. the spiral in her eye just. I mean, he just reinforces that in the whole film. We're just spinning the whole time, though. Like, yeah, we never know what's up, what's really down. Really introducing themes that are but drawn why, out. Why in all is the it that when you look at the titles in Psycho, it's it's not complete? You look at the rest of them. They're also the geometric, though. In. Like, but they're running into one another. They're getting pulled apart. We never know what's what's real. What's the full image? But it's someone else's. It's not a full perspective, you know. It's it's but interpreted. But do we ever have a full perspective in that film? No. No. But that's right. the whole thing. But that's Hitchcock. That's what that's that's why he's the you're, master. You're left to wonder. Okay. See, I love this. She leaves the light to like, Hitchcock. you know, when I she assumes cuz she comes to the dark side. So <laughs> and the right, bars she comes in the into his the, dark side. Look at him, he's in a completely black It's spirit. almost like they're in a cage with one another. Kind of like this scene. And here, yeah, there's bars again. He likes and bars. And they're both behind bars. And but whose perspective are we looking from? My telephone. Is it Guy? Is it Bruno? We don't know. I think it's... Look at Bruno's eyes. Bruno's He's like completely trying to entice him to come to the other side. To yeah. come to the... Target. But do we but always move to the He's only side? driven to the other side when he's really faced with, you know, Authority. the symbol the of the threat law. Of, well, it, there you go. He's oh, guilty. If you like to see my saw. Sagging flesh. I will end your pleasure now. Oh, it's the dead mother. Ah! <laughs> oh, the light hit me. Ricky? He's a transvestite. No. He's just dead. What did he have, Charlie? I don't know. And right here's great too. I mean, it's, they're like split halves of the same personality. But they're mirrored. I mean, why is that even interesting? Look. Yeah, but they're they're, they're using sound and and image to really get the doubling across. And when you get the point of views, half of his face is in the dark, and she's completely evenly lit. Now, who is he waiting for? I think he's waiting for Judy. I thought it was Madeline. I don't, I don't think it really matters. Well, how could it, really it not matter? It's just up to his. She, his desires. Again, again, the visual, the use of the fog effects really makes her bringing out a, coming out of some do sort we of even dream. Know who she is? A bit of both, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, she's, her? she's is finally what he wants or what he thought he wanted. I don't know. It's his own, it's his own projection of his desire. I mean, is, there, is he she's really so even desiring? She's willing to double doing? for that. If it's his projection, then is he? a bit of the Judy-Madeline combination. Does he even want Judy or Madeline, or does he want his own desire? Well, she's accepting I think, I think he wants his own now. desire, I like that. Is he kissing himself? Yeah, you can tell that she's such it because of her smile earlier on. Okay, listen to this. He's completely taking on her, his mother's voice now. But it's not just audio. He becomes a visual image right there, too. She still gets the last word. I think death gets the last word. The end. <laughs> you think you are so smug and safe watching? I'll get you, my pretty. Now, Mr. Kaplan, suppose you tell me who you are and what you want. <laughs> this is great. He's so screwed at this point. I was thinking, uh, do you, maybe not, maybe do you know this guy? He can still get himself <laughs> out, maybe. Yeah, but it's. He didn't even see what happened really. I mean, it was a talk. glance. It's right then uh, yeah, when he's there, definitely he's screwed. done. And Wait. now hey, everyone every else is he's in trouble too because they're just smile. All the characters are drawn into his guilt, including us. I mean, we're in the we're in the photograph. And well, we here again, I mean, he's he's completely he's in being his shadow totally too. entangled because of all the shadows. She's leading him on a wild goose chase. But she she's knows that he's following her. Here. He's also leading. The audience, Hitchcock is leading the audience, forcing us to look through his perspective. But Madeline and controls the whole us. image. She's completely She's controlling entangled. us. We're entangled in like. I think Scotty's perspective controls the whole image because of the the shadows that are on either side of the the frame. 
it's really Scotty's view. But we're not watching her. Madeline. Through him. Through him. We're forced to. Yeah, but then whose perspective is this? This this scene shows us that you don't necessarily need to use a visual cue to be in someone else's perspective. How are you going to get sound. it? I mean, listen to the voiceover. She's totally talk, discussing her own guilt. But it's her perspective, and she's chosen to steal the money. She's completely not The visual is used. It's the combination of sound and image to leave the viewer into what but we're doing now, where it's open for interpretation. Though she did take the money, I don't think that she necessarily is so guilty that she deserves to have a pound of her flesh taken. And she clearly thinks that she is that guilty. She won. She's laughing. She's driving away from the location of those voices. To be found guilty. Is it a safe? No, I think it's supposed to be the camera's gaze. But it's Norman. No, but I think Norman is a stand-in for the camera's And now we're essentially seeing what he's seeing. But we're seeing four images of... We're also seeing Hitchcock's perspective. We're seeing four blondes. blondes. But the blondes are looking at each other. The blondes are a symbol of desire. And we're looking at them. And they're They're looking at us. And he's done rather quickly. Mm. See, he puts... Norman put the gaze away, but, I mean, Jeffries just totally seeks out that gaze. Well, it's all he has. He's stuck in a chair. In a cast. I think, ultimately, it's all any film. Here, he's not satisfied. He needs to get closer. I mean, I know he's paralyzed, but he does everything in his power to get closer. But is he active in the gaze? Does he... Does this... No, he's but he thinks he is. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's totally participating in the He's gaze. directing he's the gaze. Directing he's directing our gaze as well. Is the gaze action, though? Yes. The gaze makes judgments. The gaze seeks to fulfill desires. And it's selective. You don't see everything. You see what he wants to see. Could there be a bigger lens on the set? But... Okay, so if you see what he wants to see, right then here. you see what the women Well, she's see. standing in for him. She, I mean, come on. Searching in for a purse. I mean, come on. But she's yeah, taking action. Yeah, but there's nothing in the, in the purse. And if there's nothing in the he's purse, taking, which is he's totally... He's giving her orders that she can't even hear. So, well, have we really solved anything then? No. I, we we just... can't even decide whether or not it was us who kills Marion. Hmm. But... Well, I think she thinks that that it was us because she's she totally she's staring dead. at us. But we saw her get stabbed. It's the final, I mean... <sighs> she's she's looking at us and almost saying, like... Look, Hitchcock's Look brilliance done. is that we just can't resolve any of these issues. Is it all the viewer's fault, then? I've never been on a train. It's not what I heard.